In this video, we will discuss four activation functions. The sigmoid activation function, which is defined as f of x is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to the power minus x. The sigmoid is an S-shaped activation function and another function in this family is the hyperbolic tangent activation function. This activation function is rectified linear unit which is also abbreviated as RELO. The RELO is defined as f of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. This activation function f of x is equal to x square is a square activation function and it's not very common. However, this activation function is used in Cryptonets perform inference on encrypted data and this paper is a very famous paper from my This activation function is finally a linear activation function which is defined as f of x is equal to x. So the input and output are same. In other words, if we input any signal to this function, we will get the same output. It is important to note that the sigmoid rectified linear unit and the square activation functions are very commonly used and all these three functions are non-linear. Linear activation function is not very common and uh, it is important for the students to know conceptually why this is the case. So in this lecture we discuss it because it is related with the depth of the network and the depth is related with the discriminative power of the network. On this slide, we have shown, shown a neural network, and this neural network has three layers. Layer L minus 1, L and L plus 1 has 2, 3, and 2 neurons, respectively. Further, we, we assume that layer L has a linear activation function, while, while layer L minus 1 and L plus 1 has nonlinear activation functions. Now what is the effect of using a linear activation function in layer L? The effect is that this network can be reduced to two layers network where the depth is just two. So apparently the network on the left side shows that the depth is three but effectively its depth is not three but two which we will prove here. And we will prove that if we input x to both networks the result will be same because they will use the parameters in such a way that the result will be same. Because that the layer L due to linear activation function has been collapsed and we obtain the network on the right hand side. Hence the depth of the network is reduced to 2 instead of 3. Let's prove this mathematically on the next slide. On this slide, we have reproduced the same network which has three layers, L, L plus 1 and L minus 1. We will discuss the math with a point-wise math where the signal X and the weight W are multiplied element-wise. Let's annotate all the signals. So for example, here in layer L, this one is X superscript L and subscript 1 which means that the signal is belongs to layer L and it is the second unit. Okay, Let's compute uh, the signals for all the three units at layer L. So layer L input is dependent on the previous layer which is L minus 1, x, to x0 L minus 1 and it will be multiplied with the weight uh, minus 1 and x1 will be multiplied with the weight 0. Further assume that B1 and B0, which are the bias vectors, are set to 0. Okay, let's do the math. So we multiply x0 with minus 1. We get minus x0 and let's fast forward the math. So when we multiply it with 0, uh, the second part will be 0. Okay, so now we have computed the incoming weighted um, signals at layer L and we say that layer L uses a linear activation function which is f of x is equal to x so in other words the input output is same so if we have a neural neuron and this neuron has some input and output as the activation function is 
linear so the input is the output is same as the input what does this mean this means that the active uh, the signal that we computed here will be uh, the output at this neuron and this and x0 l minus 1 will be the output of the third neuron now this uh, xl will be fit to the will be multiplied with the weights in the in this layer let's initialize this layer as well so and compute the activations at l plus 1 so for the first unit when we do the math which is very straightforward okay we get minus 2 times x0 l minus 1 similarly we can do the math for the second unit of layer l plus 1 and it results in because the two of the incoming weights are zero so only the second neuron output in layer l will be the in the accumulated input over here okay now the two signals encircled in green color are the input to the neurons in their l plus one okay now let's recompute the same operation using vector matrix multiplication and annotate the weight matrices w1 and w2 so w1 we have two equations the activation at layer l is dependent on the activations at layer l, l minus 1 multiplied with w1 and plus p2 and the activations at l plus 1 is dependent on the previous layer which is xl times w2 plus p2 which is the bias vector now let's expand equation 2 and importantly uh, we have f in equation 1 which is the activation function but as we discussed that the activation function in layer l is linear which means the output and input are same so this can be replaced with one or an identity element okay so let's expand equation 2 equation 2 contains x to the l which is uh, represented by equation 1 so if we replace xl by the contents of equation 1 and expand this equation further we get x from the layer l minus 1 times w1 times w2 and the second and third terms due to resumption of b1 and b2 being 0 r r results in 0 what does it mean that the activation at layer l plus 1 is a Kevin into the activation at layer L minus 1 times W1 times W2 we can see that the activation at L plus 1 is not dependent on layer L according to this equation okay so if we expand this it is L minus 1 and X1 L minus 1 times W1 reproduce the matrices over here and if we do the math particularly this matrix is 2 by 3 and this one is 3 by 2 so if we multiply these two matrices we get a 2 by 2 matrix and this will be my and 1 0 1 and the input at layer l minus 1 if we multiply it we get minus 2 x 0 l minus 1 so we get this result and if we compare this result with the point wise math the result is same okay what does it mean instead of multiplying x with two words w1 and w2 we have another matrix w3 and we can simply multiply x with w3 and get the desired result 
let's explain what is meant by the order of a weight matrix w a weight matrix connects two layers so in the feed forward sense the previous layer determines the rows of w while the next layer determines the columns of w for example w1 has 2 by 3 order which means layer l minus 1 has two neurons while layer l has three neurons based on this logic the new matrix w3 with 2 by 2 order will be connecting two layers both the previous and next layer will contain two neurons each there will be connections in between which are minus 2 1 and 0 1 in row major order what all this math means it means that feed forwarding x with the defected network is equivalent to a two layer network whose parameters are denoted by w3 which further means that the depth of the network is reduced by one layer due to the linear equation function in that layer let's conclude this unit we have shown that if a layer implies linear activations, then that layer will be collapsed. The students should be careful about the apparent and effective depth of the network, especially if the layers are linear. Finally, the whole philosophy behind deep learning is that in the increasing depth, the discriminative power of the network improves. We therefore should use nonlinear activation functions. During this discussion, we had some assumptions. Let's simulate this concept in a more detailed video in a generic way. See you there. Thank you.